Good morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Um, getting back out of this is Kimberly, Kimberly LeClaire Art. And I finished up with my um, Christmas card series for my back drone. So now I'm going back to doing a, a little more of a short painting. So this is actually an aster flower. Just kind of had looked up before a bunch of different flowers. Um, kind of put them in some rainbow colorings in my AI program just for some inspiration. So this was kind of the uh, first one that popped out at me when I was going through my um, my selection of choices. So I thought I would try it. I'm just going to kind of keep it up in the background here. So I'll bring it up so you can see it a little bit better. So this is the Aster. And it is, like I said, in a rainbow style. That's how I created them in there. Just so I can kind of get some fun colorings. I don't really know what the original color of it's supposed to be. But this is just uh, going to be my version of it. And this one was done over here in a square format. I'm going to do an up and down and see if I can't pull off just kind of a generalization of the flower and, and what inspires me about it. So if it doesn't look exactly like it, well, that's OK. It's just there more for my inspiration. So I'm going to turn you guys so you can see what I am doing. And then we will get started. So this is an up and down one. I typically don't do a lot of ones. Um, in a portrait style. Majority of the time, the ones I do are landscape. But I thought I would try seeing if I could get a little bit different of an angle with it this way. I tend to do things and then I'll run out of room. So I thought, well, maybe it would be better for me to have it tall. So the one up in the picture, it's kind of far away for you guys, but you can kind of see it. It's um, a lot of purples and, and some blues in the background. I'm going to probably try like what you're supposed to do, which is to do the main part and then build things around it. I tend to always build my background and then put things on top. And then of course it's never going to be as vibrant because it's um going through the other color. But this is a white one so actually if I wanted to I could have fun and make a um I could do the background. Let's try that first. Actually let's have some fun with that. Let's kind of um stain the background. I'm, um I think I'll do it actually with regular pastels this time instead of since I didn't prepare and pull out my um my other ones, but I'll use my um, my alcohol and I'll spray the um, the regular one. So let's try that. Let's get some fun colors in. Let's get some purples in here first in the background. Because then I'll be able to get these colors in in the beginning and I won't have to worry about it um, being all muddy when I try to go over it because it'll kind of be sealed in there. So let's get some pinks. They're all going to kind of melt anyway. There's some stuff down at the bottom. Gonna need some blue in the sky. Go along with my purple. And there's a lot of yellow and orange at the sunset area here. I'm not sure how well these are going to blend. <laughs> They may end up looking really funky. But it's just a Saturday test. It's not anything that's that critical if it works or doesn't work. It's more for the learning experience and just kind of warming yourself up. And I like doing that. So, all right, we've got some down. We got to make sure though that we cover most of the areas or it's not going to blend very well. It's not going to be enough paint and pigment down. And you try to work with it, it just kind of blow off the dewy thing. A little bit of that shadow there. All right, so I need to find, where's my brush? Here's my brush. Let's get some alcohol. Try not to spray it where it gets all my other pieces there. And I don't even care if it drips. This way I can just kind of brush it in here, make sure it's covering all the spots. I really just want it to cover the white of the paper. And the nice thing about alcohol instead of using water is it dries faster. So hopefully by the time I'm just about ready to start back up at the top again, that the, um, or when I'm done with this bottom area here, that the top is close to being dry. 
can see right there, didn't really get a lot of alcohol. It's not really going to do too much. So let's get a little bit wetter. When you do this technique, though, you'll find when you pull your tape off, the sides aren't nearly as clean because a lot of the alcohol will kind of squirt under there. But since most of that is put under your mats anyway, it, it's not quite as important. And see, I should have really started with my um, yellows first because now my brush was a little bit muddy. So when I try to blend it, then it was getting it really dirty. And this area didn't get enough pigment at all, so I can't even move it. And I know you can do stuff when it's wet too, but I don't know if it's going to really mess up my pastels or not. This area is darker down here. A little bit wet there. So this area is going to be a little bit funky and because it's it got kind of gummed up right there it's not going to coat really well when I do my um, next layers. So I've, I've found that to be a problem. So I'm not going to really like this section down here I can already tell. But let's see. That part's a little bit damp. Not too, too bad. Let's see if we can't get it to uh, dry a little bit here so we can work on it. But I hope you guys have um, some interesting plans for today. I'm not totally sure what I am doing yet. But I always enjoy my weekends, so should be fun. Okay, well, this is getting some interesting colors on the background. I kind of like it. It's kind of cool. And it reminds me of some other paintings that I was working on before. And sometimes I'll see a background, I'll do something, and I'll be like, okay, well, that painting's just not even going to happen. Now it's something else because you see something different has formed and drawn your attention so much more that you don't even care about what you originally started with. All right, so now we got to bring in some of these purples back up in the sky. Bring that back out. And then we'll come back in with some. We don't want to go in too far because we do need to bring in the flower. So I can only kind of do this corner section here. What's nice about doing these lower backgrounds so is if you don't really want to do any blending, you know, necessarily with your finger, it's a lot easier because you've already got some color down there to start with. So it's easier to get away with saying, well, heck with it. I'm just going to go with more of an impressionistic type of a look, something kind of like this where it's just on top. Now, it's not to say that I won't end up giving up on it and blending later, but for right now, it's looking kind of cool. Okay, so I need to figure out where my center of my flower is going to be. I don't want to get one that's too soft. I want a dark green, but I don't want one that is, um, the softer ones just really fill the tooth up and they put a lot of color down. So I want a harder stick. So now I'm going to kind of figure out because of being square, it's, it's harder where the center is for me. So let's see, maybe my center is going to be around here. See what it's doing? It peeled off my, I put too much of the, um, the spray down. So a little more. Luckily, this is just a test one and it'll kind of show you guys what not to do as well. I'll probably end up with a lot of white spots in my painting and have to try to figure out how to cover it. Okay, so then it's kind of a darker and it's all coming off. Yeah, it's just digging into it. It may actually give it an interesting design, an unintentional thing. We'll see. 
So that's kind of the trick with the spray. Watch out because it will mess you up. Okay. It's almost coming out like a, um, oh, what do you call those kind when you, you peel off the color instead? It's all gummy. Okay, so that's my, my initial part. And we have to go out with the next layer. And then we went out a little bit farther here. And then some of the blades kind of come out this way. And then we have to go a little bit brighter. There's a little bit of reddish kind of in there. Let's blend some red in these other areas. And it's not everywhere. It's just kind of some spots. At the bottom, there's a lot of purple too. And it's a real, um, a real pink purple in this design at least. We will have to tell us what is the uh, actual color of an aster. Because I'm pretty darn sure it's not rainbow colored. And then everybody will have to tell me what's your favorite flower. Sunflowers has been a really popular one whenever I ask people what, uh, what their favorite flowers are. It tends to be sunflowers. And I didn't realize how many sunflower paintings I'd actually done until I started going to look for some paintings of flowers. I'm like, wow, I actually do a ton of sunflowers. So I found that that's kind of become apparently a little more my favorite. And I used to always love roses before. Roses were always my favorite flower, but I've kind of become a little more partial to uh, sunflowers lately. They're a very happy flower. It has a lot of petals and a lot of um, different texture to its petals and a lot of color dimension here. And then this side, of course, isn't nearly as, you can't see the long ones as much as you can on the other side of it. These are a little bit more translucent up here with the sun. We'll come back in with another color too and round these up a little bit better. Just kind of starting to get some of the shapes of the petals down. This is kind of the ugly stage of the painting here. I need one a little bit more of a brighter yellow. This one might work. it off a little bit of my cornmeal. That works out pretty good. <laughs> then you get stuck underneath your fingernail. All right, so my sun is coming more from the left hand side. So I gotta get the left part of these petals a little bit lighter. Get them a little bit more rounded. These aren't nearly as bright on that side. Flowers kind of a little bit unique looking. Let's bring in, we need almost like a white yellow kind of to really pick up a couple points of that, that sun coming through. Okay. 
didn't get this background area so I'll have to probably fix some of my flower petals when I get to that point because it's it's going to have taken it away now there was a couple little white sections up in here all right so now I need to bring this shape of this a little bit better it doesn't look right it needs to be where well, it's darker down here if I can get the darkness in there with all that area being all chopped out Now I need a softer pastel, and I think I'm only fine with my harder ones here. The softer ones may be able to at least get um, to stick a little bit better on there. Kind of make up for my mistake of my spray. Trying to bring in some of those shapes of, of the flower petals coming up and curving like that it was kind of a little bit of a brighter green and then it had a really bright green tip here Pretty soon it'll look like hey, like I meant to do that, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Might be able to pull it off and might not be able to. We can kind of see if we can kind of cover in some of that white area and then at least it, it's a different color. And this will be darker on this side. So I've got to find a darker one than that. A little bit of our darker purple over here. Looking a little bit more three dimensional now, not quite so flat. And of course, it's a little bit more shadowed at the base of some of these petals. We need to bring in some shadows. A little bit lighter on this other one. This side won't be nearly as dark, of course, because it's not in the shadows as much as the other side is. these petals I have to kind of get them to looking like they're curling and that's a little bit harder for me something to work on I gotta get my more of my shadows on my flower petals as they're kind of curving down and It's harder, especially in a in a quick video for me to do something like that versus on a one that I can really take my time and, and detail it out. So these quick ones may not look quite as accurate as they could look. Have to let me know if you guys collect flower paintings at all. Do you tend to find you have more landscapes in your house? What's your um, typical style? Kind of all over the board as far as our when we as far as collecting other artists and what type of paintings we have. I wouldn't say that it's a 100% specific kind. I mean, we have some abstracts. We have some landscapes. 
it just kind of varies and we have various artists as well different time frames that might kind of help bring out some of my curves here I need to get a little bit more dimensions and uh, shapes to my curved pieces. I want them all to be a little bit different and look like they're layering on top of each other, not quite so much um, just all one big clump. I need doing a flower with a lot of petals like this is a little bit more difficult than I expected it to be. Right now I've been enjoying doing a lot of uh, my my collage pieces and my layers, my transformation and layers collection. And that's where I've got a lot of my important sayings and thoughts and stuff in the backgrounds of the pieces so when you look at it from far away you can't tell it, it looks just like a, a collage type piece but when you get up close then you're seeing all the statements the you know you are special you are wonderful you are loved you know i am a warrior i am powerful and it's these fun kind of um you know, your daily mantra paintings where you can create the um, words that you want to see. You can tell me what your words you'd want in your painting, what colors, what type of images, what's important to you. And we can create something that's really special and meaningful to you. That whenever you see it, you'll know it's it's your saying and other people might kind of look at it and go, oh yeah that's neat but you know what's really underneath it and if you want horrible statements to be covered up we can cover them up so it's kind of like your way of saying they don't matter anymore they have no more power over me i am blocking you from my mind then we have that option too okay i'm going to try to go on this background a little bit more before I um, lose my chance to work with it. So this side was, this side was a little bit more yellow. And this side was more orange. I'm going to try to not do a lot of my blending, like I said, on this. So let me pull in some of this pink. I may not have a choice if I accidentally go down too low and hit one of my petals too much. Hard to get really close to the edge when you don't allow yourself to blend. You kind of have to get your stick on the, the side, which is what I need to do on this side over here to get this part. This area right here, it's only a really darker orange. We kind of need to blend it a little bit up into that other one so it makes some sense. Let's put that over on this side too, and then we'll come in with another lighter color on top of it. And we'll bring it out a little bit more since the side is brighter. Sometimes you can kind of use the stick to help the blending and it's not quite as dramatic as using your finger. And it kind of helps your finger will completely push it all into the paper. 
All right, we need a little bit of a lighter purple. Was kind of the last clouds down there. The other side. Now we'll give it a little skinny strip of the purple, and then we're going to go darker like it's the mountains. We'll kind of come in with a little bit of a bluish at the highlight area just to make it look a little bit different there. Okay, let's. Setting these down a little bit, a little bit different than what we did on our under layer. I didn't quite have it down this far, but when you really look at the picture, it's it, the flowers more above it, and I gotta have a lot more lower flowers down below here. It's bluish to kind of bring out these mountains a little bit. And there's some water down here. I'm going to go ahead and go here, and then I'm going to have to go over it with my um, petal. Some of these areas are not going to cover at all because of the alcohol wash messing it up. bringing in our our water right here now well, that's where our things are going to be anyway so that's fine and then this section right here at least on this side was a lot more of a darker green as we had our mountain range here so let's come in with this and then we'll come back in with some tree shapes just got to get this kind of covered Not quite dark enough. I'll have to come back in with some more darker colors and accentuate it a lot more. Just making some random shapes there. This one's a little bit darker. This is just a warm up piece, just something to enjoy getting started for the day and these are some of my newer greens that I just got. They crumble so easily so I left the wrappers on them. But they're very soft and got myself some new colors. That one's not quite as dark as I was hoping. Some of these took them out of the wrappers and they just totally broke apart. So all I have are these little slivers to work with. Which when you want a very fine line, that's actually pretty good. But when that's not what you're going for, it's harder to work with. And messier. All right, this area needs to be a little bit bluer, but it's kind of a purple blue. And this is the area that got really messed up. So it now has a totally different looking texture to it. And then there's a little bit of the sunlight in the water there. Bring that down, and then it was a little bit of a pinker orange around it. And then the sky or the um, ridge here had a little bit of an orange. Area to it. And it's not dark enough in my 
Whoa. <laughs> I hate it when you drop them too, because then they just shatter all over the floor. Makes a mess. All right, let's go back and we need to, let's get the stem in. So we don't get that stem and we're not gonna know where those little leaves are. It's gotta be logical where it comes out, of course. Come out from here. Just trying to kind of get it in to start with so I have something to work with here. A little bit thicker, I think. Definitely a darker green than that. Try one of my other softer pieces. It's kind of crumbling as I'm working with it here. And we have a leaf that's coming out over here. I can see a leaf over here. There's some coming off of here and off of this side as well. A little bit off of here. Now I'm hoping that the shape of the leaves aren't really important because I'm probably not going to get them exact. I'd be like, well, an aster has that kind of a leaf, so you know it's not that. I don't even know what region that they would be in. And whether or not the um, AI program is anywhere near correct on what it really looks like. I'm assuming that it, it kind of knows. All right, we need to bring in some more purples and pinks on these um, bottom flowers here. These were a little bit longer. But because they're in the shadow, they're a lot, a lot darker on this side. They're kind of squatty looking right now. And that's not very accurate because you're not gonna have one side of the flower have funky looking short petals versus the other side. Got to bring in some of the yellow, the mellow yellow on top of these. It's not entirely in the shadow. And we want to make it look like it belongs to the same flower. I can't be pushing too hard or like I just did right there. I'll pull off the, uh, the lower color. I can get my um, the tube starting to get a little bit filled up on the paper, so I'm not getting as much uh, of the um, pastel down that I want to because it's just hit its capacity. All right, let's try to make our our leaves here look a little bit more like leaves. Can't use that; that's too dark. Um, or too light, I should say. It's a little bit lighter. These are all different brands of um, pastels. I don't 
can't remember if these are any of the um, Jack Richardson or not, which unfortunately he passed away here in 23. And very, very good pastel products. I bring in the light on this one side here. I can come through with a, uh, this might be a black. And if it's a green, it's a really, really dark. I think this is my one piece that's, that I really love and it's hard to uh, figure out what it is in order to get another one of it. Kind of shadow my backside here and then this one is a lot darker of course because it's underneath everything so it's going to be darker same thing with this main corner right here and then there's certain areas of these folds that need to be shadowed way to really make something stand out is you got to have a lot of your opposite colors so you've got to have your light and your dark and if you don't they just look really flat I need to be able to have things that are really gonna you know pop against the other like in my picture even this is too bright actually is more of a of an orange right on the edge of it picking up the reflection off of the sun there and then there's a nice little strip in that one these have little veins in them we want to make sure we pull out the veins areas And then the parts that are just really in the sun are going to stand out a lot more. Versus the spots that, of course, the sun is not touching and then it's darker. It's looking a little bit more three-dimensional now. Not sure how long I'm going on. Well, wasn't meaning to do such a long video for you guys, but I hope you are enjoying it. Uh, let's come back in with this darker pink here. That white got a little bit too white. It's a lot more of an abstract version flower than in you know 100% accurate one. And you get some bits of um, really bright areas where the, the sun is standing out because this here is more my focal point but it's all part of this flower but this area here is too light Still got to get some darkness down in there. Keep my better ones are over here. Gotta go underneath you guys. All right, let's get this one. This is a real dark. I got buried. I kind of forgot they were over there. All right, let's see. Maybe we'll kind of let that kind of continue on. I'm worrying about it being so much in the in the water. Well, that's not gonna be too natural looking. I have to come back and 
pick up a little bit more of this water section right here, just under this leaf. I don't like the way it would look like it's wouldn't look logical to be that direction and that shape. So maybe it's all kind of a little bit of a fog here. Bring in some of this blue. Make it look a little bit more. foggy and diffused down there. I like in this corner. What can I do different in this corner? Make this leaf a little bit darker down here. Again, bringing out the the lights a little bit more by throwing in a little bit more darks to make it uh, stand out a little bit more. Need it to pop. And if I really want this area here to pop, I can bring in some of my uh, kind of like a really highlighter type of a one. Bring in a few petals. Really draw your eye in. You don't want to do too much or it'll just take away the whole look. So we'll just bring in those few. And allow this side to be a little bit darker. Looking for a little bit, a, a dark, a brighter one, but a dark still and to kind of pull in some of the color down here but still to be you know muted not take away from the brightness on the other ones well for ruining the paper at least i was able to salvage it to a picture that i like and was a bit of a warm-up uh fun exercise so didn't mean to make a 45 minute video for you guys i thought it was gonna be 15 so a little bit longer um but i appreciate you um sticking around if you did uh, again this is kimberly with kimberly leclaire art and i hope you have a fantastic saturday thanks <laughs> bye bye